Today, I wanna to talk about one way that you can make your programs more flexible and more portable using environment variables. Hey folks, welcome back. I hope you're doing well. When we start programming, when you're first getting started, usually you're focused just entirely on, can I make this thing work? Please just work. But at some point, as we get better, as our skills improve, we start to think about how can I write this code so that it is actually likely to work on someone else's machine because we're working in teams, we're working in companies, or we're making products for customers. So someone on a different machine is going to need to run this code and it's gonna to need to work. And it's often difficult, especially when we're working in C to guarantee 100% portability, that can be really challenging, but there are some things we can do to increase the likelihood that the code that I'm writing is going to work on someone else's machine. So today I want to talk about one way that we can do that using environment variables. I did make a video on environment variables a long time ago, uh, back in uh, 2019, I think. In that video, I talked about what they are and how you can set them or get them using get env, put env, set env. Also how you can set them in the terminal. So if you missed that, I'll put a link down in the description to that video. That's not what we're covering today. Today, I wanna to talk more about how we can actually use them in our programs. And for this, I wanna look at a particular example. So recently, members of my lab were trying to install MSP Debug. Okay, this is an open source tool that I've used in a few previous videos. In fact, I think I used it in an example of how to actually make fix and push them to open source projects, how to contribute to open source projects. But we use MSP Debug to load code onto MSP430 microcontrollers, which we use in our research, and it does a couple other things, but that's something for another video. So the point is my students need it and they're having trouble installing it on new Macs. Now, the problem is, is that, it, so one of its drivers, the driver that we use, it depends on a library that is made by Texas Instruments. Uh, this is lib MSP430, or sometimes it's called TI lib. So it's got a bunch of code down here, these are the different drivers it supports, but you can see there's a bunch of TI lib code here. And in the past, we just had to copy the library into some location that was globally visible to running programs, something like user lib or user local lib on some machines. But with some recent security updates, Mac OS is not allowing us to just copy stuff into user lib. I'm sure the reasons for this are totally valid, but it's still annoying because we can't do our work. Or at least my students were having trouble making progress and getting to where they could do their work. So we talked about this and one of my students told me that they were literally just putting a copy of the library into every one of their MSP430 projects and that worked, but what a complete and insufferable pain in the neck. Yeah, so long term, that's not gonna work. That's not something that I can get behind. So I just thought, let's modify MSP Debug. It's open source. Let's just go in and help it find our library. That should be easy enough. So I decided to come in here, look through the code, and amazingly, someone had already beat me to it. I just didn't realize it. So if I look here in tilibapi.c. There, so you can see up here they have like, this is the name of the library it's depending on. Is this tilib file name? So let's look to where that's actually used. Okay, so down here when you initialize the API, there's this little if statement here. And so let's look at what this is doing. Eventually what it wants to do is it wants to call dynload open here. This is just a, a wrapper around dl open, which is uh, something I've talked about in a previous video about loading libraries at runtime. But so the idea is, is at runtime, we're gonna open this library and we need to know where to find it. And so up here in this if statement right here, this is where the magic happens. We have the file name of the thing we're actually looking for. Um, part of the reason this isn't a variable and we were talking about it up above is because this is going to change. If it's on Linux, it's gonna be .so. If it's on Mac OS, it's gonna be .dylib. But here they wanna consider two cases. One is the library might be in some globally visible location like user lib or also in the local directory, you know, someplace where the loader is going to automatically look for libraries and then it's just gonna find it. That's the case we're handling right here, right? In this case, there is no path, we're just giving it the file name and we're gonna be good. But what if it's not there? What if it's somewhere else? And that's the case when Mac OS is not letting us copy the library in. So instead, what they do is they give us this option where if this MSP debug TI lib path environment variable is set, so they're gonna to check to see if that's set, then if it is, they're gonna grab that into a variable called path and if that's set, then we're actually gonna specify using S snprintf here that we're going to add the path forward slash and the file name here. And so that is going to allow us, if our TI lib is located in some strange location, then what we can do is we can actually 
specify through this environment variable where we should find it. And I wanted to show you this because this may seem like a small thing, and it is. It is just a small thing, you know, a little consideration by the programmer, but this allows me now to use the software on my machine even though I'm having trouble making the library visible. So now I can just export a variable in my terminal and say, hey, this is where you look for this library, and now it's gonna work great. And so, yeah, so this is something that you can use in your own programs if there's something, uh, you know, could be a file path like this one, or some other bit of funkiness that might not be the same on every machine and might not be easy to just automatically detect. So yeah, this is one of the things that environment variables are really good at because they're pretty much available on any machine. And so you can give your user the opportunity to readjust things for your program and that can make things just a bit more portable. So I hope this helps. I hope you learned something new today. And until next time, I'll see you later.